Hello, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today we're going to do a plot tour, or actually a tour of the three plots. Um, I'll just do a bit of intro because uh, lots of people don't really understand how we're organised here. So I'm standing in my polytunnel on my plot at the moment. This is the first plot we got. Uh, in fact, we got it three years ago almost today. Um, and then a year after that, we got Debbie's plot. And that was, uh, you know, really important. Debbie's my wife uh, and allowed us to really expand. And then we got Jenny's plot and Jenny's one of my middle daughter. And we kind of work the three plots together, the three of us. Uh, and I do most of the seed sowing and the management and the videos and the harvesting. And Debbie does quite a bit of the harvesting as well. And Jenny does lots of the planting and weeding and all that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, we, we work the three plots. I'm, I'm effectively the manager perhaps of the plots. And as I say, this is the almost the end of my third year. And so it's a really big uh, day for me. And so I think we harvested so far, let me just work it out, we harvested £3,000 worth of veg in the first year when we were just sort of getting the hang of things. £5,000 in the second year, so that's £8,000. And £7,000, 500 or oh, thereabouts uh, last year. So that's £15,500 worth of veg that we've taken so far. And this year we're on target to harvest £10,000. So that will be £25,000 in four years, which I'm pretty pleased with. I'm definitely learning and improving at quite a, quite a pace. So let's take a look around the plots. So we're going to start by taking a look at the polytunnel and as you can see it is quite a mess, quite a jungle. And in fact one of my jobs for today is to start to tidy things up in here because we've got lots of stuff in pots which is not really necessary now. Uh, we can move some of those pots outside. So for example we've got, we have loads of calabrese uh, that we've been harvesting in pots and we've got loads of potatoes here in pots and you know, these actually at this end were planted pretty much the beginning of January. And so, you know, they're only a few weeks away from harvest. And then basically we've got successions, you know, all the way down here. Um, so we should be definitely sometime in April. We'll start harvesting potatoes and then we'll have continuous harvest from April onwards. Um, and then we'll start our Christmas potatoes in August and September. So we'll, we pretty much go year round in fresh potatoes and obviously we'll be storing loads as well. And then we've got the brassica bed that's been feeding us really gorgeous brassicas all the way through uh, the winter. And it is worth having a few brassicas actually because although it all looks a bit of a mess now, um, these have just been fantastic plants. And on foul weather days, when you really don't want to be outside harvesting. It's really nice to come in here and you've basically got everything you need. And then these are the salad beds. And again, these are all looking a bit ragged because we've harvested, you know, we've been eating the salads out of this bed for all of autumn and all of winter. And I've just planted some new plants in here. So the ones sort of down the middle are new plants. And I pop those in just because this bed will soon be peppers and tomatoes. Uh, so I just needed something quick. And as you can see, I've got lots of radishes as well down here. And in fact, you know, we've got radishes all over the plot and we've been eating radish radishes for the last two weeks now. And we've got celery down the end here. We've got sorrel and stuff like that. So we've got a really nice selection of things. Some more potatoes here. Then we've got our overwintered carrots and they're really starting to pick up nicely now and these are planted in October and got some more down here and these are doing even better and then we've got peas and you can see they're putting on some really nice growth now and shooting up there and these are an example of a good crop that will soon be out of the polytunnel making space and that's just generally one of my principles in the polytunnel I have this huge center area down here which is always full of pots, but it's always full of different things. Uh, and so I can have the long lived stuff actually in the beds down the side where they don't need much watering, etc. 
uh, and then all the stuff down the middle is constantly moving through like a production line being started off in the polytunnel and moved outside or let, started off outside and moved into the polytunnel late in the season and that will be the case for example with the runner beans which are going here so those are just germinating now so they'll be planted out soon and then in a couple of months those runner beans will be outside so what else have we got so we've got more calabrese down here and as you can see we've been picking calabrese like crazy and got the sprouts here and we've just taken the tops off these sprouts and so we should get some really early sprouts coming and those won't be tight buttons because at this time of year what you get are kind of loose little clumpy sprouts um, and they're absolutely gorgeous they're so tender highly recommended to grow sprouts early in the season i've got loads more coming and I've got a few cauliflowers and other bits and pieces which I'm trying for a nice early crop here and then again just the last of little bits and pieces of salads um, and some more calabrese, loads of broccolinis, cabbages and the like and then we've got all of the strawberries so again there they've been brought in here after lots of frosts outside and there's loads of those and then all of the, these pots along the top are full of strawberries as well apart from that one there which is a blackberry and then of course I've got this little shelf here which is incredibly useful and in fact next year that's going to be full of spring onions all the way down there inspired by Mike Herdis and his uh, success at doing that and this little, this little bench is perfect for that because it's the, that's the north side there of the polytunnel um, so it gets loads of sun but the, this little trestle table doesn't shade this bed at all so here's a quick look an overview of my plot and you can see the polytunnel here so this bed down here is gradually being filled with all of the overwintering brassicas and you can see they all got pretty bashed up in the uh, gales that we've just had for the last couple of weeks but i think they look like they're going to survive they are a little bit too far on uh, really for planting at this time of year I'd have preferred them if they're about half this size but we'll see how they go cabbages have been doing really well uh, quite a lot of these I've been harvesting kind of like this as uh, cut and come again kind of cabbages uh, and obviously I've also had loads of hearts um, I did lose this one it kind of just uh, blue a little bit quicker than uh, I was expecting but uh, not to worry we had plenty anyway so all of the raspberries are starting to come to life which is nice and these are the, all the autumn fruiters as well and they're pushing through the uh, this really thick mulch that I've put down here of uh, various twigs and wood chips and things like that and these actually all came from my path I just raked up the uh, surface layer and popped it on there and then we've got the gooseberries and I'm really pleased with these gooseberries they really are um, growing nice and strong and had a lot of problems actually with these gooseberries with um, mildew last year uh, and sawfly the year before so uh, <laughs> they've not had much luck but uh, in previous years they've been fabulous and even this year this last year when we had the mildew this whole area here were fine and it's only the ones at the back there a bit beyond the uh, the wheelbarrow that suffered from the mildew but uh, I've also taken loads of cuttings uh, of these and they're all springing to life as well so our main brassica bed is on Jenny's plot but on my plot I just have a nice kind of selection of all sorts of different things and these were planted really late on in the season because these were all second crops um, but I've left them in the ground because I do love it when everything goes to seed <laughs> it's really fantastic so I love these sprout tops like this and of course all these sprout leaves are edible and, and really gorgeous I actually really like it when these sprouts kind of blow like this as well I always pick those and again lots more sprouts leaves these little cabbages again are not designed for hearts they're designed for leaves and they'll start throwing up seed uh, heads as well um, and again they're just gorgeous everything all these seed heads off brassicas are all just like purple sprouting broccoli um, and 
some broccolini which I just can't believe that this is still going this plant um, but it's throwing up so much life and again all these seed heads are, are really lovely um, yep yeah, so that's pretty much that so this is my charred bed and I've just opened it up to the elements it was underneath that little hoop cover and I'm putting my early um, kales in there because you plant kales too early in the season they just go to seed um, so the ones I've got now they're only small plants only about this big probably but they should uh, get going in there really quickly and so hopefully I'll have some nice kale at the time when my 2018 kale is uh, all going to seed and this is a new bed for me and I've got strawberries down the outside and I've got garlic um, on the inner these rows here and here and I've got shallots down the center and then I've got trees uh, down the center as well so it's a really productive bed and I'm really excited to see how this one goes because it's a new experiment for me in interplanting. I've actually still got some Romanesco cauliflowers we've had about 12 15 of those so far this year um, and the side shoots off them are really nice sometimes they don't look quite so nice but uh, they taste really nice so again just like purple sprout and broccoli um, and these should have um, you know normally harvest these at about December time but I planted them late and kept them in the uh, polytunnel and then planted them out in the ground late in the year and they've just done fantastically well I've been really pleased with them uh, I've got some spring onions in here, I've got some peas at the back there. So I'll just run through these netted frames. So at the far end I've got corn salad, here I've got spinach, and then there I've got winter miners lettuce and rocket, and this end is empty. And within the next few weeks actually I shall be clearing out all of these netted frames because this is where obviously all my uh, salad crops for summer are going and then here I've got clumps of sprout plants and some more rocket I'm actually going to take you and have a, have a look at those sprout plants because they're really interesting now I am a massive fan of brassica leaves and I eat them all the time in smoothies and steamed and I am experimenting this year with trying to get more uh, brassica leaves of a bigger variety all through the year and so one of the things I'm trying are sprouts growing for leaves and I'm growing them in these little clumps and my theory is when they're sort of grown like this they'll run to seed quite quickly so I'll get lots of sprout tops um, then I'll get some blown sprouts as again I say I really like those and I'll get loads of leaves um, and then I can keep on planting them like this effectively just as in the same way that I might um, sow lettuce or something like that so or spinach or, or the like so sprouts i think are probably the most nutritious of the uh, brassica leaves or at least the common ones i suspect that collets are probably even better than uh, sprouts but uh, yeah so i'm but sprout cheat <laughs> sprouts are really really cheap the seeds so uh, they're a really want to, interesting one to grow like this and of course i'll be growing kale and all that sort of thing but these uh, provide a nice uh, complement and a bit of extra variety. Now I'm in my mini greenhouse and I'm not going to spend too much time in here because I'm going to do a video of what I'm sowing and growing in April and I'll cover everything that's in this little greenhouse at that time but as you can see it's quite full I'm really happy with it and I'll just quickly talk about the things that we're planting so we've got these broad beans uh, this is a variety called Stereo and these are picked really early as little Marsh 2, like finger size Marsh 2 beans and those are probably the first beans that we'll actually eat and then I've got some dwarf French beans and this is my first batch and I've got another batch that's going in the polytunnel as soon as I make some space and then I've got some salad rocket here which is just about to be planted out on Debbie's plot and I've got some radishes as well and then I've got some brassicas these are some of the brassicas that I'm going to be planting out inside that uh, hoop tunnel that I showed you a few minutes ago okay so let's take a look at what we've got growing under cover okay so in the first bed I've got this gorgeous perpetual spinach and um, this really is so tender it's like a chard but it's even tenderer than chard and interplanted in here 
I've got absolutely loads of radishes and these are all ready now and so we've been harvesting these for uh, a few weeks now and yeah they're, they're really nice and they're only these little cherry ones uh, cherry bell I think is the uh, variety but boy are they gorgeous and then I've got my carrot bed and you might not see the carrots because it's quite hard in this light but yeah really good uh, germination of these carrots and so I'm hoping to get a nice early crop from these so next we're in one of my salad beds and this is Grenoble red and this is by far the best uh, salad uh, lettuce leaf for overwintering and these plants are in pretty good condition and I only lost one plant in the whole year so that's kind of amazing and then in this bed you've got Roxy and you can see from all of the green in there that I lost quite a few of those plants and they don't look particularly great at the moment because I harvested them all yesterday and I also harvested the Grenoble Red yesterday but uh, they're, uh, they're growing really strongly now so it's kind of worth trying to overwinter them and actually next year I'm going to grow them in the polytunnel where I can give them just that little bit more protection. So in this bed I've got peas at the back. Um, I can't quite remember what uh, variety those are. Uh, Oregon sugar, pa sugar pod, that's right. Uh, and those, when this top comes off, which it might come off today actually, um, I'll put a frame in to uh, support those. And then here, these are aldermen and these have just been grown for shoots. And probably I'll start harvesting those maybe on Friday, so two or three days time. And then in here, I've got some cabbages and some cauliflowers and these have been grown really tightly um, because I only want small heads so I can get those out of the ground and get this bed uh, replanted uh, with salads in a couple of months time. So next up is one of the little hoop tunnels and this has got spinach in it and this is spinach that was planted in January and it's doing pretty nicely and again this was harvested yesterday um, but still looks pretty good actually. Could be. Uh, harvest it again. In fact, spinach is like that. You know, you harvest it one day and then the next day you think, did I actually harvest that bed? And then there's another spinach bed. And again, this was harvested yesterday and a bit more effectively than the uh, previous one. So there's not quite so much here that, that still needs harvesting. But come Tuesday, Monday, next week, this will all be ready for harvest again. And these little hoop tunnels are really fabulous for things like spinach. Um, they just do really well in here. And then we're in another coal frame, and then we've got lettuces interplanted with spring onions. And I, I do like this planting scheme. It looks pretty, but it's just really effective as well. The spring onions really don't interfere with the lettuces at all, and you just get that extra crop squeezed in there. And then we've got lots of uh, overwintered uh, radish. I think it's a watermelon or something like that. And I'm actually harvesting that mainly for the leaves because we eat a lot of smoothies and you know pretty much we've got you know I, I eat a smoothie, have a smoothie every day and then I've got friends that have smoothies every day as well so we get through lots of smoothies and these are just a really excellent source of uh, uh, brassica greens that um, you know work really well in a smoothie and of course they're extremely nutritious. So then we've got yet another uh, lettuce bed and this is only recently planted, but it's all going on really nicely. Lots of different varieties, give lots of different textures and tastes. And uh, I do love the uh, salad mixes. God, we harvest so many salad mixes for our friends and family. So next we've got a really lovely bed of cooking greens. And we've got some bull's blood beetroot. We've got some chard and perpetual spinach. And again, it's uh, really growing nicely. And then here we've got another bed of radishes and you can probably see here some lovely French breakfast radish coming on and uh, really excited to see how those do. Now the radishes that uh, I grow at this time of year I always start them off in plug trays and um, start them off at home uh, so they germinate really quickly and I bring the plugs straight to uh, the polytunnel, leave them for a couple of weeks to grow on and then plant them in the soil and of course by then they're really nice little healthy plants 
and they mature really quickly even at this time of year so it's definitely the right way to grow radish and then another salad bed was harvested yesterday so it's all looking pretty ragged but I will just show you one of these winter marvel <laughs> what, what a gorgeous lettuce this is and it's really coming into its own at this time of year I should be growing a lot more of that next year actually so just uh, just cleared this one this was one of our winter spring onion beds and then we've got another bed with lots of spring onions and these gorgeous Navarra lettuces I've actually got some baby leeks at the back there I'm not sure how successful those are going to be and then finally last of the coal frames these are all Grenoble reds and again I only lost one plant it's really remarkable because normally I lose at least 10% of the plants sometimes 20% over winter and then a few uh, more um, plants not doing quite so well I've got a little bit of aphid damage on some of these so I won't be planting lettuces I think in this bed I shall get it cleared as soon as possible and plant something more interesting and then finally on my plot on the outside there's uh, the green drive which provides access and I guess this is where I've got my flower border I don't grow anything other than edible flowers apart from down here and I'm really pleased with that and this is all interplanted of course with trees so we've got all sorts of plum trees and apple trees and pear trees and cherry trees down here and then all the way along the top in these little planting pockets we've got alpines which really seem to thrive along here and then kind of woodland plants along there so now we're on Debbie's plot and Debbie's plot is gradually transitioning to perennials um, but it, obviously it will still have a few annuals on it um, so there's not quite as much life as there is on my plot but there's these gorgeous red kales and this is throwing out so many of these really tender baby leaf uh, little clumps of kale really gorgeous so if you ever think of taking your kale out because it looks really rubbish in winter leave it till spring and then it really does literally spring to life again and then we've got some garlic uh, and strawberries and then underneath this little cover that's where the salad rocket and radishes are going we've got loads of collets most of these collets we harvested once already uh, earlier in the season and throwing off uh, new plants and we really love these collets they're like little tiny clumps of kale and then we've got herb beds more herb beds that's all this is going to be herb beds and then we've got a few overwintered in the polytunnel brassicas um, most of these are cauliflowers so I'm hoping for an early crop there we've just harvested a calabrese and then we've got the purple sprouting broccoli which you can't see very much of because we just harvested it all yesterday trying to get the uh, camera in there little tiny bits but yeah there's loads of gorgeous PSB on here and then all the current bushes are doing very well and we've got elephant garlic and garlic down here interplanted with strawberries and then just walking through here pear tree a little bit of windburn on here because uh, obviously we've had some pretty horrendous gales but should be okay all the trees coming to life and we've got all these perennial kales now down here as well and this is a gorgeous perennial kale doesn't look much at the moment but come the hungry gap this will be a fabulous source of kale we've got another one here another one down there and lots at home as well and we just started harvesting rhubarb and I do love these herb beds absolutely gorgeous at this time of year and of course they only get better
Okay, so we just arrived at Jenny's plot. And this needs a little bit of tidying up, which is one of the projects for today. But this is where we've got most of our brassicas. So we've got purple sprouting broccoli all down here. A few different varieties all coming to maturity at slightly different stages. So this one's not quite ready. That one's ready and we're harvesting that and as it goes down there and then this is the summer um something like rudolph i think this is and so we've been harvesting that this is coming to the end and then we've got kales again all springing to life again kind of crazy how uh, how kale does this you know you think you've had it with it and then this happens and you get all this lovely baby leaf and of course you get these florets as well and these are superb, I love these. Um, this is the time of year we really, we really love it because we're eating the florets off all the brassicas. And you know this cabbage here that we thought was left for dead. But just look at that floret on there, gorgeous. And then we've got a few little red cabbages again, not being grown for hearts, we're growing them for these tender leaves and they're here, the floret and yeah, really lovely leaves at this time of year and then we've got our main source of smoothie greens at the moment and also cooking greens and so that's field beans and we pinch the tips out of those field beans and I'll pinch one out now just to show you so that's what you do, you just pinch that out and as you can see it's gorgeous, really lovely and tender and yep, yeah, just, just as good as spinach and more prolific and so yeah, this is uh, really working well and then we'll, not really long now actually before the brassicas go in here so then we'll be harvesting all of these greens, not all of them will be eating quality because the tips are lovely but not all the leaves are eating quality just uh, just eat the tips um, so yeah we'll be composting the rubbish eating the tips and leaving the roots in the ground and these roots will be full of nitrogen just as a point of note lots of people talk about the fact that uh, the uh, beans fix nitrogen in the soil well they only do that if you don't allow the beans to uh, flower and grow pods because all that nitrogen in all those little nodules on the roots all ends up in the actual beans. But if you harvest them now, or actually in April time, uh, just before the brassicas, then there won't be any flowers. And well, there might be flowers, but there won't be any beans. So all the nitrogen will still be in the soil. More rhubarb, slightly further on the uh, varieties on Debbie's plot. And we're harvesting this as well last of the leeks and so once these leeks are finished we'll be uh, most of our alliums will be from the store and from spring onions and it'll be that way for a month or so and then we'll switch over to well we'll add green garlic and then bulb onions fresh green bulb onions again so in addition to the field beans we've also got some broad beans the field beans are slightly smaller bean uh, and obviously the broad beans are, are really massive uh, tender beans um, so we do grow uh, plenty of broad beans and there's another bed of those over there interesting to compare the ones that are protected by this little bit of polythene slightly further on and standing slightly better. So then we're on to our collets, and these are also starting to go to seed and this is to be welcomed because these are absolutely gorgeous. Just pull that whole thing off there, really lovely. And also some really nice tender leaves at the top and florets at the top as well. More florets at the top more of these little shoots here 
so these plants just give and give and give and this is interesting because this is one where the top was cut off because the plant grew too big and so it just thrown off multiple seed heads effectively so all of this is really lovely so here's our main early summer alley and bed loads of garlic in here and loads of onions it's all going pretty well and then that bed where there's well there's a few weeds but strawberries around the border but that's the main uh, summer onion bed and there's another bed on my plot and another little one on Debbie's plot and then these beds are our main garlic and strawberry beds and so this one's all elephant garlic early strawberries down one side late strawberries down the other and this is our main garlic bed again mid-season strawberries and all over the plot just kind of like on these edges we've got green garlic so this is just garlic that's just like any other garlic it's just that we're going to be harvesting it early uh, rather than leaving it to mature fully okay so that's it a little bit of weeding needs to be done grass needs to be cut but other than that it's in pretty good shape looking forward to getting all this these old brassicas out and getting everything replanted I'll just tell you quickly what's happening so summer onions main crop here with um, bean frame at the end here another bean frame at the end here and then this is going to be summer and winter squash all down here and then this bed here where these brassicas are at the moment there's going to be another bean frame here and then oh, actually no here there's going to this is all going to be plants that I'm going to grow under cover so it's going to be um, celeriac, carrots, parsnips, um, celery, all sorts of stuff. Things that will, you know, that I can cover in May because it's going to be May before these are finished. Um, and then basically leave under cover until winter time uh, when they're harvested. And then at the end there, from that point onwards, all that bed is going to be uh, brassicas and the focus of those brassicas are going to be things that again can just stay under cover for a very long period of time so under there there's going to be the um, collets and the sprouts and uh, winter cabbages uh, and that sort of thing and try and keep the earlier maturing things like the calabrese and the cauliflowers and things like that on my plot where I can keep an eye on them and I don't have to have them under cover all the time so that's it quick tour and I shall be doing a what am I sowing and growing video where I go into much more detail about uh, all the seedlings that I've got when I'm going to be planting them how they're all doing and um, all the plants that we've got in the ground that we're not harvesting yet and of course all the things that we're sowing in April so I'll see you soon